We do seemingly everything through our smartphones. Shop, communicate, count steps, even stare out into outer space. So why is it so difficult to get our smartphones to easily be our smart home hubs? There are some things to unpack. I'll explain them and I'll show you how you actually can control many of your home automation items directly from your phone. Let's go. Hey, if any of these videos have helped you, please consider hitting us with that thumbs up, clicking that subscribe and hitting that notification bell so you'll be notified when we upload the latest contents and hold our weekly contest where we're giving away dope swag. Yes, awesome stuff, free giveaway, get there. So I know you wanna know things like which smartphones give you the most options, Android or iOS, and with Alexa being so popular, is there a phone which works best with it? And you may be thinking, so many separate apps, why can't I just control everything in one place? So let's begin with those options, Android or iOS? Well, Android has this one based solely on the fact that your phone can connect directly with the Google Home app, which controls all those Google smart home hubs and speakers also made by Google. What it boils down to is compatibility or ecosystem. Google has a head start on Apple and a larger platform. By some accounts, HomeKit is compatible with products in the thousands while Google Assistant is compatible with over 10,000. And there's also one huge difference. The Apple Home app for HomeKit products is available only on iOS, while the Home app for Google products is supported not only on Android, but on iOS as well. Another key difference between the two services is set up. Google can be a bit trickier to add products to its devices, but in true Apple fashion, they've made the process pretty intuitive and frictionless. You just scan a QR code on the product's packaging or on the product itself and you're in. So why is it so difficult to make our smartphones our smart home hubs? Put plainly, feature sets. With some products, you actually get more functionality in their native apps than when you add them into your Home Hubs app, whether that hub is Apple HomeKit or Google Home. For example, LifeX is one of my favorite smart light bulb brands. Their bulbs have some of the deepest, brightest color saturation or chrominance that I've seen from any manufacturer. In their app, they have quite a few options for customization and creating moods. On the other hand, if I jump into a compatible hub app like Alexa or Google Home, there's quite a bit less you can do. You still get a lot of options, but still more with the native app. So if you want that greater granular control, you'll jump into the LifeX app. Additionally, adding your LifeX customizations to Alexa or Google Home can be tricky. It's a little bit hit or miss. So what does work and what doesn't? Let's bring Alexa into this discussion. Alexa and its app are going to be one of the most widely compatible of all home assistant apps, but it suffers from what HomeKit and Google suffer from. Some manufacturers require a bridge device to be able to connect their hardware to the voice assistant of your choice. You can see that here with this camera from Arlo and one of my favorite smart switch and smart home manufacturers, Lutron, also requires this. I have the Lutron switches in my home and I found them to be more reliable than just having Wi-Fi enabled bulbs. Placing the switches on your wall, then just plugging standard LED bulbs in allows those bulbs to be controlled by your voice assistant. And Lutron even has a large line of automated window coverings you can control with your voice or through an app. Since you can get the Alexa app and the Google Home apps both on iOS, I tend to think that those are the way to go in terms of home automation. Sure, you can invoke Siri to control them, generally speaking, but you're going to get the broadest list of accessories you can buy and connect to. But you're saying, Tshaka, I'm already heavily invested in Apple products, what do I do? I don't know if you're saying it like that, but that's how I say it. Well, I'd say, random internet stranger, you're good. 
Be sure to consult Apple's website for their official list of HomeKit enabled security cameras, thermostats, light bulbs and kits and any other products you may need around your home. All of this, despite which home hub or voice assistant you use, requires a bit of planning because there's no universal standard yet and I don't think there will be one. Everybody wants you in their ecosystem buying their products. So let's walk through what each control system looks like on each device. Since Apple makes some of their home automation products, they tie in neatly to the operating system. Apple TV is accessible via the remote icon in Control Center. Great if you always have your iPhone and don't feel like reaching or if you have children looking for that Apple remote. As far as lights and other peripherals go, Access those in the Home app. You'll see them as tiles, but you can also access those tiles in Control Center. Tapping and holding on a tile gives you more options as well. On Android, when you've added a product to their Home app, they'll also show up in their notification shade area in some form or another, and this is where Apple has an advantage over Android. With Android, how this shows up on their phones is dependent on which Android phone and overlay you have. A Pixel running stock Android, Samsung device running One UI. iOS is iOS across all iOS devices, so it all looks the same no matter which one you and members of your family own. One of the greatest conveniences of tying your smart home to your smartphone is the ability to see and control things remotely, and geofencing is a large part of that. With many products, you can set a parameter which activates that product based on the location of your phone. So, for example, you can set a thermostat to turn on when you're headed home and pre-cool or heat your home, set lights to turn on when you hit the driveway, but what about data usage, you know, doing all that remote work? It, it isn't that high unless you're checking your Ring camera in the Ring app from work and you're not on your corporate Wi-Fi. So I wouldn't be too worried about data usage as far as being connected to home automation outside of the home. So what do you want to do with your smartphone away from home? Any questions on the topic that I didn't answer in my fact here, my frequently asked questions? Let me know in the comments below and I will get to them. As always, I don't take it lightly that you've spent your time watching with us here today. I'm Tashaka Armstrong for reviews.org. I'll catch you on the next video.